What up, Pittsburgh Steel fans? Matty be here with another episode of Steelers War Room. We are talking all things the Steelers re-signing, re-signing a wide receiver, um, a young wide receiver to their practice squad, Jacob Copeland. And Jacob Copeland is being brought back in again after um, Elliot, the DB, was released um, in terms of the fact that Calvin Austin has an ankle complaint. Now, apparently, it was actually a lot more serious after the game. Mike Tomlin said in his press conference just a little bit earlier today that basically... Um, Cam Austin's injury had gotten significantly better after being significantly serious. And so this led, but this also led the still still bringing in Copeland, whether Austin is right to go. Now, Austin has been on the practice squad before. Um, he was cut um, through, through the different defense developments and players they had to bring in, you know, a few weeks back. But I wanted to cover, I thought something was very interesting about what, Jacob Copeland and how they brought him in. So he's an ex Gator. Um, and Maryland Tarpin, he's actually a former teammate of Spencer Anderson, so there's some links there. Um, obviously, Mike Tomlin understands what's going on um, at Maryland quite a bit. He's got kids that are the kids that are played there, um, and particularly at the wide receiver position as well. But the other thing that stood out to me with Copeland is he's a bit more of like a long range strike weapon. In fact, he led the in 2020 and 2021. He actually led the SEC in average of yards per reception with 18.9 in 2020 and 15.7 in 2021. So definitely that longer strike weapon. He averages the sort of yardage actually that George Pickens averaged for Georgia. It was a different thing when you're playing Georgia, even versus the Gators or, or Maryland. Um, he averaged over the course of his college career 15.6 um, uh, yards per reception. He only had 1,742 yards though in college off 112 receptions. Um, and 11 TDs. But that's basically every 10 catches he's scoring in TD. So again, you're looking at that long-range strike weapon. Obviously, the further you pass deep, the harder it is to catch the ball. And also, you've got you know a, a defensive backfield that's setting up for you. So pretty interesting there. He was pretty consistent. Most of like, you know, minimum of two touchdowns each year in college, maximum of four in 2021. Um, and in 2021, I think it is interesting because that's where he averaged 15.7 yards. That was his highest year for receptions with 41. So as I say, he's definitely a guy that brings, I guess, this long range strike to the Steelers offense. And if you had talked to me about this, this act, like bringing him in prior to Matt Canada being sacked, I, and, and that's why I mean, when he originally came in, I didn't really think it was that newsworthy for you guys because it's like, well, hang on. The, the, we're not passing the football well. Kenny's not playing well. Um, we're not seeing balls pushed downfield. But you bring a guy like this in, and I'll do a caveat. He's obviously on the practice squad, but there is the three. You know, players can be elevated from the practice squad three times before they want to be brought onto the brought onto the the roster, the full roster, the fifty three man. But it, it is interesting because if Calvin Austin isn't right to go, they obviously have plans. This there's, there's a role that they see out of Copeland, um, and I, that's where I think it's pretty interesting. And that's where it is on punt return, kick returns. So he didn't have many of these. He literally had 10 kick and punt returns combined in college. One of them went for 26 yards. And he had eight for 128 yards last year on an average of 16. Um, he averages actually 17.1 um, kick returns there. He's yet to do a punt return, even though um, they've got him listed there as punt returns from one of the college numbers that I brought up. So it is interesting that, as I say, he seems to be a bit more of this the Swiss Army knife. He's six foot and 202 pound. So again, maybe offers something. And I know still fans don't want to see us go back there after Canada, but maybe offers something in the sweet play, sweet play game as well. Um, but yeah, as I said, like it's, it's interesting you bring in this long range strike weapon um, in the absence of Calvin Austin. And I like it because like obviously, you know, Robinson's playing close to the line. Deontay is doing... Deontay's stuff. We'll, we'll have a video um, probably later in the week about Deontay. I, I'm still gathering my thoughts about that. I, I want to hear what he's got to say as well, but I, I'm starting to fall out on, on, on Deontay. Obviously, Pickens is a beast. He's a weapon. Um, and then, obviously, Calvin Austin was the fourth guy. Um, Mike Boykin's really, his, his, a lot of his contribution is really considered more around um, being a gunner. And that makes sense. The Steelers have also got two wide receivers that can catch the football, particularly in a Haywood and Freemuth. And then you also obviously have the running backs and Najee. Um, if he was used right in the passing game, could be an option. And obviously, we've seen Jalen Warren be successful there as well. So there's plenty of receiving weapons, but none of them really are this, like, apart from Pickens and Deontay when he's doing, when he's actually playing well, um, are these, like, these deep, long-range strike weapons. And the Steelers want something here because I was a big fan um, of Jacoby, um, of Jakari Robeson 
who flooded in now the Steelers practice squad last year that was with a few different teams as well um, out of Wake Forest. And he was more of that long-range strike weapon as well, so from a wide receiver perspective. So I think the Steelers are trying to build something here. Um, I'd be interested to see whether you know this guy can continue to stay on the roster for the rest of the season, whether he gets elevated, all those good things. Obviously, as Neil comes back, it also meant that that Elliot, the DB, was less needed. They're also seeing good play. Pierre um, was um, was questionable for last week. He'll probably be back this week. So again, they don't need to keep that necessarily a DB there. Trenton Thomas is playing well. Um, so the, the Steelers have got options at DB. I like that they that they brought in this wide receiver Copeland. Um, and yeah, keen to see what he does if Calvin Austin, Austin's missed. Um, for a week or two, at least it gives us, we obviously we don't want CA3 out, but it gives the Steelers an option if this occurs. And that's what you want at this stage of the season. You want an option. Um, but yeah, I'm interested to see if this guy can find his way onto the squad and even a futures contract for next year. Um, he was, did come out in the draft class. He was undrafted this year. He spent some different time with different teams, including the Tennessee Titans. Um, but I actually, yeah, I'd, I'd love to see him. I'm hopefully get some footage off, off sort of training and can, can sort of see what he can do. But um, and the way he's fitting in within this um, Steelers offense. But yeah, Steelers sign, re-sign a strike weapon to replace Calvin Austin if there's an injury. As always, go Steelers.